HMS Queen Elizabeth, the UK's flagship aircraft carrier, will soon return to service after five months of repairs in Resyth, Scotland. Damaged by wear and tear, the carrier missed leading NATO's steadfast defender exercise earlier this year. Aircraft carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth to rejoin Royal Navy after extensive repairs. Her sister ship HMS Prince of Wales had to take her place while the repair work to her starboard propeller shaft was carried out. The aircraft carrier returned home to Portsmouth in March after taking part in ex-steadfast defender NATO's biggest exercise since the Cold War. During the NATO training, HMS Prince of Wales was joined by more than 30 ships. Four submarines, multiple aircraft from maritime patrol aircraft to F-35 Lightning jets and more than 20,000 personnel from nations including Canada, Denmark, France and Spain. Following former Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's announcement, HMS Queen Elizabeth may head to the Indo-Pacific in 2024. The aircraft carrier has spent the last five months in Resyth, Scotland, undergoing repairs to her propeller. According to reports on Tuesday, HMS Queen Elizabeth is expected to leave the facility by July 24 and return to active service. This return is ahead of initial repair forecasts. HMS Queen Elizabeth is heading out to sea after spending the last few months undergoing repair work at Resyth Dockyard. The 65,000-ton aircraft carrier travelled down the Firth of Forth following the completion of work to fix her propeller shaft. It was a delicate operation getting HMS Queen Elizabeth down the Firth of Forth as she had to wait for low tide to help her get under the three bridges that span the opening of the river. People gathered by the waterside to catch a glimpse of the carrier and get some pictures of the impressive sight. Admiral Ben Key, the UK's first sea lord, said recently that the fleet looks ahead to a time when the air wings of both the Navy's aircraft carriers are made up entirely of uncrewed aircraft. Even a few years ago, that might have seemed far-fetched. Today, the technology to make it possible is all available now. The British military leads the world in remotely piloted aircraft systems and it's poised to pull even further ahead. That starts with the Protector, which is the Royal Air Force's version of the aircraft also known as the MQ-9B Sky Guardian. Protector is larger, with longer wings, more payload capacity, better endurance, and all-around improved capabilities compared with its older sibling, MQ-9A Reaper. Its V-tails and other components are built throughout the United Kingdom and then become part of the production aircraft when they are assembled in California. The Royal Air Force's program calls for 16 aircraft, which are being delivered now. This fleet is vastly more capable for a number of key missions around the UK and the world. The aircraft can deploy anywhere with a very light footprint. Their pilots and mission crews never leave Lincolnshire, however, because they can fly the Protector anywhere it goes via a satellite link. Protector doesn't just bring a step change in military capability for the Royal Air Force and the UK it's an aviation pioneer overall because it's fully certifiable to fly in all classes of airspace. Mixing with other air traffic the first type of unmanned aircraft that can do so. It's possible because of a novel detect and avoid system built into the platform. That gives its pilots the same situational awareness in their ground control station that pilots have in a conventional cockpit. Cameras, radars, and other sensors let the aircraft sense and keep clear of other aircraft and vice versa. Meanwhile, Protector's pilots talk on the radio with air traffic control authorities in the same manner as traditional air crews. The milestones reached by Protector already have prompted discussion about a new variant of the aircraft. One that would trade some of its record-setting endurance for a versatile short takeoff and landing capability. Dubbed MQ-9 BSTOL by General Atomics, this aircraft would use the common fuselage and internal components of the existing aircraft with a new wing and tail kit. MQ-9 BSTOL could confuse adversaries by eschewing known large airbases making it much more difficult to find and target and aid British and Allied forces by keeping up with them as they maneuver through countryside or push ashore from a ship at sea. This was part of the significance of the 2023 demonstration aboard the HMS Prince of Wales, in which a demonstrator aircraft named Mojave made its historic first flight operations. Mojave is a slightly modified version of the smaller Grey Eagle aircraft. MQ-9 BSTOL would be larger, with better onboard equipment, and would offer greater range and endurance. Indeed, a sea protector. As some already have dubbed the MQ-9 BSTOL concept, 
would unlock huge new capabilities not only for British forces on land, but also the Royal Navy itself as a maritime patrol aircraft. Sea Protector could provide fleet defense for the carrier task group, hunt submarines, and take on many other critical new roles. MQ-9B is the only aircraft of its kind proven in these and other naval missions. In international exercises in the Pacific Ocean and elsewhere, aircraft have detected and tracked submerged submarine targets, served as fleet communications relays, escorted warships, and more. Sea Protector would provide significant new intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and combat power for the Royal Navy, but the fleet also has other important missions. For those, the Admiralty could select the carrier variant of a groundbreaking new fleet of unmanned combat aerial vehicles, known as the Gambit series. Gambit is an autonomous fighter aircraft built from the wheels up for the air dominance mission. It would augment the carrier's current wing of F-35B Lightning II fighters or, in some cases, take their place on some missions. Gambit is a modular jet built on a common core, like the frame and chassis of a car, which can be modified as needed with different features and produced in high quantities much quicker and more cheaply than a comparable traditional human-piloted fighter. With the support of the US and UK governments, the Royal Navy could bring these aircraft to the HMS Prince of Wales and its sister, HMS Queen Elizabeth. In short order, this would allow these and other allied governments to bring high quantities of combat power into effect more mass. As tacticians call it in order to meet and exceed the potential numbers of adversaries they could face in a crisis or conflict. The British government could incorporate these systems onto its two carriers giving him the ability to handle UCAVs in addition to the flight operations that use the ship's angled ramp at the bow. These modifications, along with a wing of sea protectors and naval UCAVs, are the way to reach the goal for the Royal Navy to field an all-uncrewed air wing. Realizing this vision would require diplomacy, time, and some investment, but all the underlying technology is not only possible and not only complete, it's also well proven and in operation today. With the appropriate support from Washington and London, General Atomics is ready and able to turn the vision into reality.